delay in getting before the media, um, and then obviously front page news of me being late yesterday to my own press conference, um, this individual has just had enough of this business after 45 years. Um, and, and Bill Feig, Bill, where are you? 45 years uh, with the Baton Rouge advocate, uh, this will be his last press conference. Um, we barely knew you. Um, but uh, congratulations on um, 45 years. Amazing. I'm sorry that we've, we put you out that uh, you had to retire waiting for a football coach, but uh, good way to go off, right? Awesome. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for all your service. Um, secondly, anything from yesterday um, uh, that I wanted to uh, cover a couple of things. One, I, I mentioned some of the, um, the analysts, uh, a couple that I d didn't get in. Antonio Fenelis is a, uh, an analyst that is returning um, with us. Outstanding young coach uh, that will be working with our defensive backs. And I know you probably have a release on this, but uh, I wanted to make sure I gave him uh, his due because i um, really impressed with him. Um, when I got a chance to observe him and his work um, during the bowl game. And then uh, we just hired Pat Hill from, uh, from Nickel State to be working uh, as an analyst with the defensive line. Um, so glad to have him on board as well. So just a couple of housekeeping items from yesterday relative to, uh, to staff. Um, I think the overriding theme yesterday, right, was about experience. Um, Certainly, uh, the, the ability to um, uh, recruit, uh, and, and then certainly, from, from my perspective, um, winners, you know, all part of, of winning programs. And, and that theme is, is going to continue um, to be heard today. I think you'll also see that a, a lot of these coaches have great ties to the state of Louisiana, uh, in particular on this side of the ball. And, and to New Orleans uh, as well, the city. So um, I want to begin with, uh, with our offensive coordinator, Mike Dembrock. Um, you know, when we talk about experience, um, you know, certainly as a coordinator, uh, unprecedented success this year uh, at, at Cincinnati, um, you know, an offense that led in, in many categories, uh, the development of a quarterback in Desmond Ritter being one of the better quarterbacks, if not the best in the country, and, and what he did this year. Um, you know, a, an offense that, uh, you know, really is, uh, from, from my perspective, one that uh, is physical, uh, which you're going to see uh, are, are the tenets of the kind of offense that I want uh, to show here at LSU. Uh, they've got to be athletic, and, and we've got to get the ball into playmakers with with Mike does a great job of um, highlighting the playmakers uh, within the offense. Uh, but, but also, um, they've got to be disciplined and smart on offense as well. Uh, but I think it starts with that, that, that basic premise of having an offense that uh, displays its physicality, um, highlights the playmakers and the athleticism on the offensive side of the ball, uh, and then has a, a disciplined uh, approach to things. And, and, and quite, quite frankly, is, is a smart offense and, and the way uh, things are managed. And Mike does an incredible job of that. He's been with me um, before and coordinated uh, offenses and defenses. Mike was a heck of a defensive coordinator for a very short period of time. <laughs> um, but I, again, it goes to the ability to coach and teach and communicate and know the game. Uh, and, and Mike... Uh, knows the game very well, and uh, is an outstanding recruiter. And again, I think when we talk about coordinators, it's not about what they know. Uh, it's about you know getting feedback. It's getting uh, the entire staff um, part of uh, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so um, we're not leading uh, as much as we're helping uh, and enabling and getting the best out of everybody uh, on that staff, and Mike will do a great job there as well. Um, our associate head coach, uh, and, and also will be coaching uh, with the running backs, is uh, on his uh, second tour here, and that is Frank Wilson. Um, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant even sometimes to bring this up because I think it marginalizes Frank in some respects. Um, 
you know, a lot of people talk about Frank as a recruiter. Uh, he's much more than that. Um, you know, recruiting is only part of this. And to be on this staff, you have to be more than just a recruiter. Is he a great recruiter? A absolutely. To be a great recruiter, you have to be great with relationships. You have to be organized. You have to be detailed. Um, and, and you have to be able to follow up and close. And, and he certainly does that. But um, you know, he's, he's, he's somebody that knows the game uh, technically and tactically. Um, he's somebody that you want to uh, be on your staff because he's got uh, great communication skills. He's somebody that um, uh, is well respected um, in this community and throughout the country um, as a man. And, and I think, you know, what's important to know is he's a head coach. He's been, he knows ball on both sides of the ball, understands it. Uh, and that's important. So um, I want to be careful sometimes that we, you know, we talk about one aspect of a coach. And certainly we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. I know I do, and I try to work on them, and we all do. But um, he's much more than just um, somebody that, uh, that can recruit. He, it, that is part of what he's done, and he's done it at a high level. Uh, but he brings a, a great resume of experience um, as a coach, a teacher, a mentor, um, to the staff. Our passing game coordinator uh, and, and, and wide receiver coach Cortez Hankton uh, and, and again we all about know about uh, uh, Frank's connection to New Orleans where he was born and brought up. Cortez as well from New Orleans. Um, uh, you know obviously the pedigree that, that Cortez brings is, is outstanding as a, a player um, and, and certainly uh, an NFL player um, who, um, who had to make his own way, you know. He was uh, uh, a free agent that uh, had to earn his, his stripes. Nothing was handed to him. Um, and, and that's what really attracted uh, me to Cortez. He's earned it, you know. He, uh, he, he, he started as a, a volunteer coach, has worked his way up through the Ivy League uh, coaching. Um, uh, and, and then, obviously, uh, just this past year coming off a, a national championship uh, at Georgia. Um, I think what's even more impressive is, is the work that he does in the community, um, the work he does with uh, young student athletes, um, those that are underprivileged, um, certainly the Cortez Hankton Family Scholarship Fund. Um, he's other-centered. He gives back as well. And so not only do we have an outstanding coach, we have an outstanding person, somebody that's other centered. Um, he's got a great understanding of, of what we're doing in terms of developing our players on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, he's seen it, he's had to do it himself, so it's just a great identification with our own players. Um, and, and excited to have somebody with his skill set to, um, you know, uh, help us with uh, what we're doing offensively as well. So extremely uh, pleased and, and uh, blessed to have Cortez with us. Um, on the offensive line, Brad Davis uh, returns and couldn't be uh, more proud to have him with us and uh, in particular the work that he did um, in, in the interim um, in taking the LSU football team uh, during that time in preparation for the bowl game. Short-handed, never complained about it, uh, took it on um, even though the circumstances were not the best, uh, he looked for a positive uh, in everything that he did on a day-to-day -day basis um, and, and tried to make the best of it. And uh, that's what you're looking for is how do coaches handle adversity? It would be easy to point the finger and it was somebody else's fault. That never was part of um, what he did on a day-to-day -day basis. He, he took on the challenge of that position. Um, and look to make it as positive as he could on a day-to-day -day basis. And he's going to do the same thing and has done the same thing. Um, and, and, you know, bringing our offensive line um, to the point where it can compete for championships. And I love that attitude about him. So it starts with his, his great positive attitude. And then an experienced SEC coach who's seen it, um, knows what it looks like and um, confident that he's going to be able to uh, develop our student athletes here to do that. He's from Baton Rouge. So, you know, three coaches right there from the state of Louisiana that are 
obviously passionate about what we do here at LSU and, and certainly um, will be um, uh, great contributors in, in everything that uh, happens here. Joe Sloan, uh, nine years at Louisiana Tech, uh, was also the recruiting coordinator, so has a great understanding of the state. Uh, also, um, you know, from an offensive perspective, has coached uh, the wide receivers and the quarterbacks. Um, we all know Louisiana Tech's offensive structure and system, quarterback-centered, and uh, Joe's a bright coach that uh, really understands uh, what we're looking for in our quarterbacks and the ability to develop quarterbacks. And that's really what this is about. It's quarterback development. And then, again, as I mentioned, uh, being in the state for as long as Joe has been, um, he's got great ties, great relationships, um, and understands uh, the recruiting process uh, throughout the state. So, you know, when you're talking about um, those five guys in particular, um, again, as we talked about yesterday, great ties to the state of Louisiana, great experience, um, a, a great team uh, in terms of uh, each one of them complementing uh, each other well and, and led by an experienced offensive coordinator. Um, pretty exciting. And, and as and, you know, we've got a great group of experienced analysts, uh, Trent Miles, um, who's a former head coach, uh, John McDonnell, uh, who's a veteran offensive line coach. Um, Carter Sheridan, who returns with us, and, and we know about um, you know, the many years that, that he was with the Saints and has been here. Uh, again, an, another coach from, uh, from the state in New Orleans. Uh, Terry Malone, um, who again spent a number of years with the Saints. He's been an offensive coordinator, has coached tight ends, offensive line, just a great deal of experience. Uh, Dean Petzing, who many of you don't know, but was with me at Notre Dame, just a bright um, coach that uh, you know brings so much to the day-to-day -day operations uh, that we need uh, at our um, you know from a football perspective um, and preparation. Um, at LSU. Um, a couple of other guys that, that we have mentioned that are really important to us. Um, uh, our director of, of um, advanced scouting is Jim Hoffer. Uh, Jim's a former head coach at Cornell Buffalo. He's been in the SEC. Um, we're excited about his ability to be on our staff and, and use his experience uh, from that perspective. Um, Lester Erb uh, was at Iowa just recently at Rutgers. He's been in the NFL. Uh, he will be the analyst in special teams as well. So um, just really excited about the staff, its makeup. Um, and, and then, you know, again, as we've talked about experience, recruiting, uh, winning coaches, uh, the ties to Louisiana, uh, the commitment to pulling our base, um, all of those things coming together. Um, as, as really the most important things in terms of putting the staff together. So, um, you know, as I stand here before you today, um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do, um, but we're excited about the challenges in front of us and developing the players here at LSU, and we'll get a chance to do that uh, for the first time uh, when we talk about football in, in, in itself. Um, in March uh, when we begin our spring practice. So with that, I'll open it up to some questions and then we'll get to Coach Denbrock. Uh, anything from yesterday that stands out other than parking news, um, I'll be happy to answer and then we'll move on from there. That was a joke. <laughs> God, it's a rough crowd. I'm going to have to tone it down with you. Hey, yes. Coach uh, Jacques Doucet, WAFB uh, TV. Uh, talking to your assistants yesterday, they all mentioned how excited they are to get on the field with the guys and start spring football and whatnot. You being a first-year head coach for the first time in a long time, how excited are you to get out there with this team and start to mold it? Yeah, I, I think for me the process is about, you know, really building uh, the right traits with the group uh, as we get an opportunity to be around them more and more. And whether that is actually when you put the helmets on or whether you're having dinner with them or you're meeting with the leadership group or you're in the weight room with them, to me, that's, that's one of the same. Um, yeah, I mean, there's tackling, there's, there's you know, route running and all of those things that are, that are you know, football related that are important as well. But each one of these days is an important day. 
you know, and, and building those habits and those traits that are so necessary to be a championship football team. Um, I'm excited as, as every day kind of goes by as much as I would be um, just waiting for spring practice to start. There's a uh, program in the SEC West that's recruited the offensive line at a high level, and they've been consistently successful probably in part because of that. What have you identified in, in your career and, and now at LSU about that unit that is so pivotal to future success? Well, you know, I, I have a um, profile in mind, and Brad and I and Mike and, and everybody in the offensive staff has discussed what that profile looks like. Um, and, and so – you know we're gonna we're gonna recruit to that profile, um, and and we're gonna develop to that profile. I think I think one of the keys to that, without you know getting into too much uh, by position group, would be that offensive linemen um, uh, can be developed, and it's a position that I look towards as a position of development, and 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 that's physically as well. You don't have to come in ready-made um, as an offensive lineman. And um, may maybe that's a bit of a change in, in a mind's eye relative to a profile. Hey, Coach, over on this side, Steve Schneider, WAFB Baton Rouge. Uh, now that you in are introducing all the guys that you got, if, if you were to go back and kind of explain what your approach to putting this staff together was, was it relying on all your years and, and people you know and – or were you trying to, you know, unearth every rock and find every single person that might fit here? How much work went into this, and, and what was the philosophy on bringing these guys here? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think each job that I've had, um, you know, when you put a staff together, um, th there's, there's a different um, approach to how you assemble it. Um, when I was at uh, Notre Dame, for example, putting a staff together, you know, the, the number one goal there was, was recognizing that we were going to have to go from New York to California. Uh, academics was, you know, obviously a, a prime mover in that. Um, but, you know, there were other factors. Um, here, um, you know, going into the SEC, um, this isn't a place for training wheels. Uh, you got to come out and you've got to be experienced. You've got to understand uh, what you're getting into. So I needed experience. Um, I also needed to pull our base. And so, you know, when we were looking at putting a staff together, uh, it was important that um, we had coaches that uh, had experience in this state and had ties and um, we could pull our base. And then I think finally I, I pulled from my own uh, kind of relationships that I've built over 30 plus years. Um, I, I relied a little bit on some relationships that uh, Scott Woodward has in, in his network uh, and, and his administration uh, at LSU. And um, quite frankly, you know, my agent has a number of uh, assistant coaches that are under his charge and, you know, that, that, uh, that he represents that, that give me that kind of Rolodex, if you will, in, in those three buckets. Hey, Brian, Brody Miller with The Athletic. You know, you've delegated play calling duties the last few years. Will that continue with Mike? And regardless, just how do you imagine your dynamic between the two? So let's get this clear. I, I call all the really good plays. Uh, at the outset, um, you know, de delegating those responsibilities um, was was not very difficult for me because, you know, for 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 my time, it, it was so important that I spent more time with the players uh, on a day to day basis. And so, if, if you're in meeting rooms and you're tied up most of the day, you know, with the other things, the collateral responsibilities that fall on the head coach. Uh, it's very difficult to build the kind of relationships you want with your team. Um, so it allows me to be in the training room. It allows me to be at meal. It allows me to do other things and, and build those relationships with our players. Now, look, I'm still responsible for the football. The head coach is responsible. So um, this is not a detachment from, from anything. Um, I'll meet with our coordinators. I'll be in offensive meetings and defensive meetings. But there's a difference between full detachment and, 
you know, still as the head coach, be responsible for end of game situations, timeouts, appropriateness relative to fixing things, you know, as they go. And I'll still be involved in those things. Yeah, Ron, right here, Ron Higgins, uh, Tiger yeah. Details. Uh, understanding that offenses, I mean, if, I guess, advanced the past few years, I mean, games are more plays are being run, it's more wide open. About how many points do you think you need to average ballpark to, to win conference and national championships? Yeah, it's really a difficult question because it depends what's happening on the other side of the ball, right? <clears throat> if you're playing an offense that, you know, is, is similar in the sense of, you know, that they want to run the football and they want to keep it close to the vest and they want to eat up the clock and they, they're going to huddle, then, you know, obviously that margin would change. If somebody is, is trying to push the ball vertically and run fast, you know, then it changes the margin in the way you play. I think to be tactical um, and, and understanding the game is so important as we talk about advanced scouting because then that's what I'll talk to my coordinators about because at the end of the day is how do we win the game? Um, many times, you know, people look at, you know, what's your yards per game? You know, what do you throw for? How many points do you score a game? I've always focused myself on one thing and one thing only and that's winning and, and how do you win? So I'm going to manage the game accordingly. If I feel like this is a game that we have to score a ton of points, then my defense is going to understand that too because they need to be part of that process. If this is a game that we feel like it's going to be because of the opponent that we're not going to need to score you know, a ton of points, then we'll all be in that together. And that includes special teams as well in terms of what we do. Analytics plays a role in this now. Are you going for it on fourth down? Are you punting it you know, to, to pin an opponent? Bottom line, I know this is a lot um, to a question, but I think for me personally, it's how you win the game more so than what the stats look like. Is the is the Denbrock as a DC thing? Is that a good story? Do you want to share it? I, it was a great story. He was energetic. Um, you know, I, I thought he, um, you know, for the most part, handled a transition when I, you know I was a young coach. And, and I was the defensive coordinator. So, you know, think of all those guys that were former defensive coordinators that took over and he was the first defensive coordinator. That's usually not a, uh, an enviable position to be in. And we were still friends after that. One of the things that you said that struck me when you got hired was that you thought you were analyst heavy. And to me, that's like a kid saying he's got too many toys, right? So are you in a sweet spot now? Do you feel like you have the, the right mix and the number that you want? I do. I do. And, and I think, you know, what we wanted to do is, um, you know, back up uh, the positions uh, with the experience necessary. Uh, and quite frankly, we used analysts, uh, you know, we've moved them into the recruiting field as well. So some of the analysts that were in football now are in the, the recruiting field. I think we needed to, um, you know, uh, address that in a sense of what I felt more comfortable with in moving uh, analysts into those roles as well. Great. Yeah, I'm sorry, we got one more here. Yeah, uh, yeah Shay Dixon with 24-7 Sports. Um, kind of a common thread in a lot of these hires is they've won or competed for championships at high school to the NFL to college, different levels. When you have that many guys who've had that sort of experience, what kind of boosts is, does that give a staff or a staff meetings or you know, however you go about that? You know, they, they've been through it, so they know what standards are. So when we talk about setting our standards of expectations, they know what a high standard looks like, and they know um, how to demand that, but demand it in the right way. And so I think what it means is that we come at it from the same perspective, that if we see something that is not up to the standard, um, that we don't have to wait around for me to address it. It's already been addressed because they've been through it. They know what winning looks like. And when you know what championships look like and you know that you've been down that road before, you're not going to let those standards slip at any time. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. First off, uh, thanks to everybody for being here. Um, I am uh, incredibly humbled to be associated with this great university and 
in particular uh, in charge of uh, LSU's offense and uh, responsible for the production that we put on the field and the coaching that these guys receive. Um, it, it's just uh, something that uh, uh, is a dream job when it comes in my mind and something that I've uh, worked very hard for over the course of my career. Uh, I believe I've prepared for um, and am very, very fortunate and grateful uh, to be standing where I'm standing today and have an opportunity to talk to everybody. Um, it's very easy for me to feel comfortable in this role, uh, mainly because of the other men that are in that room with me. And uh, the full-time guys uh, are here today. Obviously, uh, coaches talked a lot about each one of those guys. Let me just say, from my perspective, um, none of us had worked together before. Um, we kind of met for the first time uh, after we finished the recruiting campaign and tried to uh, lock down as many difference makers as we possibly could. And walking into the offensive staff room for the first time with these guys uh, was like walking into a room with people that I've known my whole life. And that is so important, I think, not only that our players understand the relationship that we have and how we work together, um, but what makes that possible is that uh, these guys being great recruiters, great football coaches, um, that, that to me is, is an awesome piece of it. What they are is great men. And when you assemble a staff like that, as Coach Kelly has, uh, you give your players the best opportunity possible uh, to be good at what they do, and not just good at what they do, but great at what they do. Um, so the foundation is being laid, and, and that continues with our players even as we speak. Uh, they're in the weight room grinding. We got them uh, out in the indoor facility running. We've got them on the practice fields running. Uh, they're, they're putting some blood, sweat, and tears into it um, as we stand here and, and talk to each other. Now, what's been impressive to me about our group of players in particular is they're not afraid to put their heads down and grind. And, and that's what it's going to take to get us back where we need to be and, and really to LSU's rightful place uh, atop the college football world. And, and that's the goal. And I think Coach Kelly's been very clear at stating that. Uh, we understand what the expectations are. Uh, we're not afraid of them. Um, we're we're, we're going to embrace it. Uh, we're going to work every day to make sure it becomes a reality for the people that love LSU football. Uh, and for, as an offensive staff, we're going to do everything that we can in our powers from sun up to sundown to make sure uh, Saturday nights in Baton Rouge, we light this stadium up uh, with the excitement that the LSU fans expect. Um, with that, I will uh, open it up to some questions. Hey, Mike Wilson, Alexander from The Advocate. Pleasure to meet you. When, well, just how would you sort of describe the offense that y'all are going to run here and what that scheme is going to look like? I would describe it at this very moment in time as a work in progress. Um, we certainly, I mean, you've watched uh, Notre Dame football. Um, those of you who have had an opportunity to watch some of the things that we did at Cincinnati, um, you know, there is a base of what we will be. We're going to be a team that uh, plays physically tough. Um, is going to run the football with effectiveness, um, is going to have the ability to stretch the field vertically and create explosive plays, uh, whether that's in the run or the pass game. Uh, and we're going to have a, a workable drop back game where we can uh, make sure that if we get into situations where we've got to throw the football, we throw it effectively and efficiently. Um, you know, the idea of, you know, coming together as a staff and what we're working on even you know, as, as we kind of broke our meeting to come over here as an offensive staff and to kind of meet with you, uh, we're in the process of, of trying to figure out exactly what direction that's going to end up taking. Um, is, is it a, you know, we're a, a personnel-driven offense at its core, which means uh, it's multiple enough that we can do what we need to do with whichever personnel group we decide to do it with. So it's, it's I, I heard, you know, yesterday, uh, you know, them talk a little bit, and you guys talked a little bit defensively about being multiple defensively and how important that was. Um, we feel the same way offensively. It's going to be uh, with 10 personnel. It's going to be with 11 personnel. It's going to be with 12 personnel. Uh, there were times in the last few years uh, at, the, at the place I just left where we played with 14 personnel. So, you know, it's going to be multiple in what we do and what we present to the defense. Um, 
can't run the same plays out of the same looks every down and have success against the defenses that we're going to play against. So it's going to be, uh, you know, an effort on our part to show the defense as many multiple looks as we possibly can, um, while not confusing the guys that are doing uh, running the plays and executing the plays uh, at a very high level. But uh, it, we're just in the beginning stages of that. Um, you know, to say that uh, we're going to run my offense. Um, it would be pretty arrogant on my part, especially considering the talent that's in this room. Um, we're going to run an offense that's LSU's offense, and we're in the process of, a, of as a staff of, of making sure we, we get that straightened out and get the verbiage the way we want it uh, and get a, a lot of those details kind of ironed out. Hey, Mike. Brody Miller with The Athletic. You know, you have the experience of going from Notre Dame and then coaching a, a very good group of five team and now back to the SEC West. I'm curious, does that kind of change any perce uh, perspective for you kind of in how to run an offense? I don't know that it does. I, I think it's, it's got a lot to do more in my mind with a lot of the things that Coach Kelly talked about, uh, getting the ball in playmaker uh, in hands in space, uh, allowing them to be productive within the framework of what you're doing. I don't think that changes level to level. Um, having uh, an attitude about yourself offensively um, where you're going to be able to run the ball even if they know you're going to run it um, to the point where you point at the point of attack and say, we're going to run the football right here and uh, good luck to you. Um, those things, I think, carry over to any level of football. And uh, so that's, that's the makeup of who we want to be and who we want to become. Hey, Mike. Scott Rappelet with The Advocate. Um, have you, how much have you been able to drill down so far on your your, your quarterback room, your situation? You have a couple. You have obviously a very talented freshman coming in, and two guys with with experience, but with not not a whole lot of it. Yeah, I mean it, it's going to be an interesting spring for Coach Sloan and uh, and and for all of our offensive unit. I mean we're we're going to have to use spring football, and, and this is kind of a roundabout way. I hope you don't mind uh, to answer your question, but spring football is going to be a little bit of us figuring out exactly what we can be. Uh, and what we can become throughout the process of building this offense. Um, we haven't had an opportunity to really be on the field and work with these guys all that much yet, but it's coming, which is good. So we can really gauge where that's it, and then we'll, you know, through kind of giving the, the quarterbacks uh, the information they need to be successful, um, give them opportunities within the spring to kind of show who really fits into what we're best at doing. Um, and let that competition play its way out and, and make sure that the best guys out there are giving us the best chance to win. Hi, Mike. This is Leah from The Advocate. Um, you talked about developing that offensive style here, and just to kind of follow up on that, how much do you let like the talent that's already here dictate that scheme that you're going to play, and then all right, once you have that scheme, are you going to recruit to that or just kind of see what um, the talent holds in the state? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question. I think it's, you know, to the first point of it, um, we have to be what we can be. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, the players in the program were very talented, in my opinion, on the, on the edges of our offense um, in the backfield. Um, you know, those players have to be utilized uh, to their talent level and, you know, to the expertise that they bring to the offense. And right now they're very physically gifted and we need to make sure we're utilizing those guys. Um, how much, how much uh, you know, we branch out from that will depend on, obviously, the makeup of our team moving forward. I don't know that I have all those answers for you today. Um, but that's kind of where it starts. Those are the knowns. Um, and then we're going to give people opportunities throughout the spring to step into roles uh, and earn their way into being more a piece of what we do moving forward. And um, that's really the best we can do at this point. Okay. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV. Um, when Coach Kelly called you about this opportunity and taking the job, what was it that really excited you about coming to LSU? And were you surprised that Coach Kelly became the LSU head coach? Oh, boy. Um, I'll answer the first part of the question. Uh, you know, the first part of the – of your question, you know, what excited me about coming to LSU was uh, a lot of the obvious things. Um, obviously, playing in the SEC West and being part of, um, you know, uh, a conference and, and football at its highest level 
um, in college uh, was very attractive. Uh, I'm, I'm a person that loves to challenge himself um, and loves to put himself in a position where uh, I've got to learn and grow and develop uh, and continue to, to, to grow my knowledge of the game and my understanding of the game. Uh, so that was a big piece of it for me. Um, the other piece of it was um, watching over the years from afar uh, all the great offensive talent in particular uh, that has played at this great school. And those are the guys that we want to make proud of what we're doing here. And I wanted to be a piece of solving that issue for this university in particular. And, and, and letting those guys that have played here and set the framework and the groundwork for who we are and what we can become uh, be the standard for what we're going to be moving forward. And, and that was really a, a no-brainer uh, when, you, when you sit down and look at that.